Hello, hello. Happy Tuesday. Just looking for my live, and there we are. All right. There we go. Perfect. Happy Tuesday. Hope you're having a good week so far. Mine's really busy this week as we take possession of our new house on Friday. So it's visits to banks and lawyers and all that good stuff. And lots of phone calls. So today we are going to have fun watercoloring and using some fun rinkers from Catherine Pooler. Um, Today we're going to be using the Baskets of Bunnies stamp set from Photoplay. Super cute and super easy to watercolor, which is nice, especially if you're starting out. So the colors that we're going to use today were the reinkers of Whipped Honey. Oh, you know what? It's supposed to be chiffon. Hang on. I picked up the wrong yellow. Sorry about that. We're using chiffon, which is really, really beautiful yellow. We're going to use reinker for apricot. We're going to use reinker for docido. -si We're going to use serenade, which is a beautiful purple. Oh boy, which is a nice bright blue, and one of my favorites, melon ice. So lots of yummy rainbow colors today. And the reason why we're going to use reinkers is because you're going to get a more concentrated ink color with using your reinker versus your ink pad. And I think you tend to use a little less ink when you do it right from the bottle. So that's why we're doing that today. So first of all, we are going to emboss our image. So this one is kind of a goldish tone. And isn't it cute? Hopefully you guys can see it has a little duck and a little bunny and a little birdie in the basket. So super duper cute. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to color this up. So we're going to talk about uh, tips and tricks and all that good stuff. All right, so let's get started here. We're going to just go pop these up in front of me just out of sight. So I've already taken our cute little egg balloon. Hi, Rhea. And I've already popped him in here. I need to kind of center it, though. We are working with watercolor paper today. I know Tim Holtz has some beautiful watercolor paper. I just don't happen to have any of it at the moment. So I'm just pulling something that I had in my stash here. But give that uh, watercolor paper a try. It's beautiful and it's nice and bright white. Okay, so to begin, we need our anti-static tool because we're going to do some embossing. So this just helps to cut down on any oils or anything funky that's kind of stuck to your paper. And of course, static. Okay. So mine is an old version. There's lots of tools on the market. Um, there are tools in the store available for purchase as well, which are fantastic. Um, now I need my Versamark. And of course mine's an old one, like super old. <laughs> Okay. All right. So we're just going to apply our sticky ink. And there's a various amounts of different types of embossing inks. You just need something that's sticky. So it doesn't matter. Um, sometimes you can even use Catherine Pooler inks because they tend to stay a little bit juicier. So they will actually work for embossing too, believe it or not. All right. I always do Versamark at least two to three times. The first time always kind of picks up that powder and doesn't leave a great impression, but that's okay. That's the, what the powder is there to do is to protect it. So I do it at least two, if not three times, like I did that. I just need 
a scrap of paper. Now, I sometimes do this too. I powder up my paper so that all of my residual uh, particles actually make it back in to my cup. So we're, today we're using Wow Metallic Platinum. And we're going to just sprinkle over top of our sticky ink. And you don't have to do the whole image as long as it'll slide over top. And I just want to make sure I get our cute little flags over there. So you can powder over top. So the next thing to do is just give it a couple of flicks. And just double check it. So I see there's a little bit of powder not hitting his ear. So I'm just going to sprinkle that on. And it looks like I didn't get enough ink in there, but that's okay. Not a big deal. A couple of flicks. And do yourself a favor. Put your excess back in the jar before you go and do anything else. Because you're going to have a powder parade all over your desk. Trust me. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. So and make sure you put it on the lid too. Okay, I'm sweeping away my extra. Okay, bring in your heat tool. Always make sure that you turn your heat tool on for 10 to 20 seconds and get it blowing really, really hot air. This is going to cut down on the warping on your paper because when it's really hot, it's ready to melt. Okay. And mine is stuck under my sewing machine on the floor. <laughs> so the secret to embossing is not to leave it on one area for too long. Sweep it across your image. And like I said, the warmer it is, the faster your image melts. And voila. You have a cutie patootie that's embossed. Okay, now, there are ways to combat any missing areas, and I'm just, I'm not sure if I have an embossing pen here or not. I used to. So what an embossing pen is, is, I'm not sure if this is, no, nope, that's not going to do it either. <laughs> Um, so what an embossing pen is, is it's filled with basically a Versamark or a sticky ink, but it looks like a pen. And you can basically draw in the areas, and of course I am not finding this at all. Not sure if this is going to be wet enough. I'm just testing it on the back of my hand. I don't think this is wet enough. Nope, not going to work. Like I said, we could fill in uh, Robert's ears. We're just going to have to be careful, that's all. Rhea, I'm going to have to make that purchase. <laughs> hope, hope there's one in the store. Okay, so to help myself out today, because my, my watercolor paper is slightly warped already, that's okay. I recommend that you tack down your image to help keep uh, the watercolors from pooling. So I'm going to actually tack it down on all sides. This will just help with keeping things a little flatter. Give it a good press. Thank goodness for low tack tape. <laughs> all right. Now, the things that we need now are some kind of water, because we're going to clean out our brushes as we go here. So I just have two little containers, and I'm going to spill it all over the place. That's always great. <laughs> I'm going to fill those up. I'm going to need a piece of paper towel just for blotting purposes, just handy to have. And let's clean up my silly mess here. Good old microfiber cloth. I, 
I have a puddle on my desk. Okay. Of course, um, you can use watercolor brushes for this, but you don't specifically need them. I know a lot of companies uh, have some great brushes on the market. Okay, now we need to add a few drops of each of these to our palette here. We're going to start with our chiffon. And I'm going to do one good size drop. You do not need a lot for this at all. And of course you can add more if you need. So all of the ink colors and reinkers are in the shop. You're going to get the nice new labeled ones. So the new labels are colored according to whatever ink is inside. So this is an old label. This is a new label. You're going to get those ones, which is fantastic. Makes for easy identification when you have them lying around. They are all labeled. The one I store mine in like little trays, so I see them from up above. So I have little sticker dots with that are been inked by that particular ink pad on top of my cap so that I can see or get a general idea as to what bottle I'm reaching for. And I have them stuck on with glue dots because I wanted it to stay on. <laughs> but it works for identifying them from up above if that's how you store yours. And one last color here, our gorgeous Melon Ice. I love this green. It's vibrant and very springy and we could use a little spring around here. We've had a really, really snowy winter and it's not typical for Medicine Hat. So, all right, see, we have a little dotty dotty spotties. We're gonna start with our background. So I'm gonna bring in a brush that's a little bit thicker with bristles just so that I can put a fair amount of water down. Oh, this one's crispy. <laughs> Okay, so decide which cup is your dirty and which is your, which is not. I just want to make sure that I don't have any residue of ink in this and it looks pretty good. Okay, so to do a wash, this is how I recommend doing it. So you're going to pick up some clean water. If you have it too wet, just tap here or tap the tip on your um, paper towel or you could use a microfiber cloth. So we're going to go and kind of paint around the image first. So you're going to have to be particular in some of your little spots. Okay. And just know that you have some sky in behind these little characters, right? So don't forget to paint that. Our stamp set is coming into the Scrap and Stamp shop this weekend. So you'll be able to find this cute set available really, really soon. And then we have a special, it's part of a special kit coming on Friday. So again, I'm just adding a good amount of water all around. You got, Of course, I can't tip it to show you where it's wet. So you'll just have to kind of watch where I do my brush strokes. But you can kind of see the shine up here on camera. So again, and I'm trying to go right up to the edge without going over the edge. The nice thing about doing an embossed image for watercoloring is they act like little walls. So I'm just going in and adding just a touch more water in those areas that I kind of started off with because the water's already started to sink in and I want to make sure I get in this little spot. And there's a little spot underneath the quackers. Okay, so of course we're going to do a blue for sky, so we're going to go into our Oh Boy ink. 
Okay, it's off in the corner here. So if you want to water down your ink, which you can do, I'm just going to transfer a little bit to this side. Because my water's already blue tinted, I'm just going to add. Okay, so the beauty of wetting your paper down first is that it whips. So if you touch it, it gives you a softer edge. Now, if you were to paint it on, just kind of like we painted that water on, um, it's going to give you crispy edges or very specific edges. So by putting down a, some plain water, I'm going in here carefully, it wicks out and becomes very soft. And I'm just doing random. I'm not doing everything all over because I want it to almost look like it's got some clouds in the sky. Okay. Make sure we do all in, in this area here. I'm actually going to go in and make sure that we have blue tucked around our little animals there. And if you have any areas that you don't like, or you've got too much water, or you're just not happy, use a piece of paper towel to blot. Simple or, or cloth. That will work too. Okay, we're going to clean out our large brush here. Okay. Beautiful. And then I'm going to go to a more detailed brush, because we're going to go in and work, work our egg. Um, the next thing that I recommend is that if you have sections that touch each other, you're going to want to work in sections that don't border each other. That way you won't uh, transmit ink into a spot that you don't want it to be. Okay? So for instance, this frilly part, you don't want to contaminate the, the next layer in that egg. So you skip that and you go on to the next one and work. You can always come back because you'll have to do things in order, but you don't want to watercolor in an area that you sits next to another one that's wet. Okay, I am going to take our heat tool because I want to speed this up a little bit. You do not have to do this. You can let it air dry 100%. I'm just trying to speed it up a little tiny bit. So see how soft the edges are because they've wicked out in that water. So super fun. Okay. I am going to do um, rainbow stuff today. I am going to do it a little bit different than my previous one. Um, we're going to start with a different color instead of yellow. And that just, of course, makes the rotation pretty cool. Let's start with purple. Let's start with our purple at the top. Okay, so we're going in with our Serenade. This one is quite saturated with color. So we're going to transfer it over and we're going to use this as a mixing palette. Cleaning off my brush, picking up clean water. There we go. So we're just diluting it a little bit. Okay. Hi, Connie. I am using just a good old watercolor paper. It works a lot better. It's made and designed um, to work with lots of water. You can't just use like a regular cardstock with this because the water just warps your cardstock out. So make sure you do use a watercolor paper for this. It doesn't have to be high quality by any means. Use what you got. Okay, so. You can color in many different ways and add your ink to your image. So there, I just took ink, direct ink to my image. But you can get a very different look by doing the same thing as kind of what we did with our sky or semi-cloudy. Hi, Sandra. Um, by going in and painting with water first. So you're going to go in and do exactly how we started our sky. Is paint your water into those areas. 
And this one's kind of neat because it's got some loopy doopies. And the walls help kind of shade things too, which is kind of cool. So I'm just going in and carefully painting over any area that I'm going to drop ink into. Okay, make sure it's good and like it shouldn't be puddly, but you should see a good sheen of color. Okay, since we're doing a rainbow, so we go purple, blue will be the next one. So we're going to skip that and we're going to go green. So our melon ice, I'm just dipping my brush into my ink and I'm going to touch because that water is there, it just wicks into that water. Okay. And you can leave some areas thicker with ink. So I'm going to leave kind of the left side with much more concentrated ink than our right side. And it'll just look like it has a kind of a natural shading to it just by sheer volume of ink to water and of course if you want to darken or deepen this then you just go in and touch it again it's kind of a fun way to ink up your Im images or color your images because you never know what the water is going to do it's going to be oh there we go so Rhea says that the stamps are available now and, but there's a kit that's coming out on Friday. We're going to have a hop, so make sure that you come back Friday to the Scrap and Stamp blog. And we'll have a, a post that will direct you to where you need to go. Okay, so again, don't paint in the area that's touching your wet section. I'm going to skip that one line, and we're going to come down to this rather skinny little feller. Again, I'm just painting with water. And let's see, green goes to yellow, goes to orange. So we're going to go into our apricot ink with this layer. So again, this one's a fairly concentrated color. So I'm going to start on that left side where I know I'm going to concentrate color. Being careful not to go outside the lines. Need a little touch more ink in this area here and make sure you go across any areas because there's a like a little bow with strings there but there's still egg left kind of in and among that piece so just make sure that you go in and you touch those areas okay clean off your brush perfect okay we're going in with our next water so we're going to paint our next row I just figured that the row with the loopy doopies um, was like the loopy doopy was the decoration so I figured the row was a little thicker so because I don't have a complete ear that's okay you just have to be careful where you make it wet because that's the only spot that ink is going to go into is where it's wet unless you touch it with your brush. So as long as I don't make it wet in that ear, we're good. Just want to make sure everything's wet. Good. Okay, we did orange. Skip the pinky red and go back to our purple. And I'm just going to bring a dot over again. Going to go in with some clean water and dilute it. And again, you're just dropping in inks. Okay. You can drop a lot or a little. Everything when you do watercolor is going to dry back a lot lighter. Okay. So even though you, this purple seems pretty saturated, when it dries, it's not going to be as brilliant or bright. And if you want things to be a little brighter, don't paint with water first. Just go in with your ink, just like I did there. Okay? So you can do it either way. It doesn't matter. There we go. And our purple 
is in. Okay. All right, so there's one left, and because it's still wet, we can't do that one. But our top two are dry, so we can go in between. Okay, we're gonna do our water painting again. And you still have to be careful not to touch those areas because you don't want to bring in an ink that you don't want to. I mean, you can definitely blend them if you want to, but I decided that not on this image. Okay, so we're going to go to our do -si do add a little bit to the tip. And again, we're dropping it in. See how it wicks almost immediately down that puddle. And we're going to concentrate just a little bit more ink on that left side. And we're going to, whoop, we're going to draw it across that water. Okay, so I've touched that. So take your paper towel. And if you press into it, sometimes you can get a lot of that ink to come up. Take a clean spot. And you know what? I put the wrong color in. <laughs> That's hilarious. But you know what? I'm okay with a weird rainbow. You guys are okay with a weird rainbow, aren't you? <laughs> well, that's just hilarious. <laughs> okay, so what colors do we need to do? Okay, we need to do this one red. Let's go down and do it. Do it on our do, -si -do here. Just know that there's like a few little tiny spots. There's kind of one underneath his ear, between his two ears. And there we go. So I'm just making it match from the top. Okay, do, -si -do again. Concentrating a little bit more on that left side. So what I did there is I just took a little bit of ink out of my brush by dipping it in there because I want it to look similar to that. Okay, there we go. And because this one was fairly dry, it's not going to wick. <laughs> Weird is best. <laughs> I know, Aria. And this is why it always happens when I'm live. It's like uh, card making bloopers. <laughs> All right. Um, so if this is weird, then this has to be yellow. <laughs> so we'll make this one yellow. It's still a rainbow. It's just not in the order it should be. <laughs> I mean, I'm weird, so it's all good, right? It's okay to be weird. That's what makes us all different and all human. <laughs> okay. Lello, we're going in with our chiffon. Here we go. A drip drop. Concentrate in that corner. Pulling it across. Just tapping that ink that's on my tip into the water. This is kind of a fun way. Because you can really do kind of like a tie-dye version if you do it this way. Because that water does some fun stuff. And we'll do some fun stuff down here on the basket. Okay. Cleaning my brush here. Picking up some Wawa. Clean Wawa. We're going to go into our final strip here, which is going to be our blue. It's still pretty, right? <laughs> All right. Okay, we got our water in. Let's go in with our, oh boy. Such a cute name. And we're going to concentrate this one too, like a little bit more than our sky. And you do that based on the amount of water that you use. The more water you use, the less concentrated your pigments are. There we go. Okay, our little eggy is done. And of course, if you don't think that you have enough color, see we've got a dippity-doo here. It's 
you have to be careful. Just use your paper towel. So you can go in and fix this. Watch. Okay. So we're going to be really, really careful. We're going to wet that line. And we're going to put a little bit of our serenade in. Now you have to be careful because some colors, when you mix them, um, <laughs> do not blend well together. They make mud. So on your color wheel, if your colors are across from one another, it means that they're complementary. Hi, Sandy. Um, don't mix complementary colors because they make brown. <laughs> yeah. If you don't want brown, don't mix your complements <laughs> on your color wheel. Okay. So we're going to go down to our, we have a little duck here. And he's, I know, he's hard to see. But once you color him, um, he's not so hard to see. <laughs> so I want him fairly concentrated. So instead of water coloring, like putting water down first, we're going to go directly in with ink. There we go. And he's still cute. We want to make him extra cute. And then there's a little bird here. And we're going to go and make him blue. He's a little blue bird. Okay, we'll come back to the flags on the other side here. And he's teeny tiny, but he's cute. So again, I'm just going in with straight ink. Not water painting first. All right. So we want to kind of leave this area alone to dry. Let's go and do our flags. And you know what? There just happens to be enough flags for every color of the rainbow. So let's do that. Um, I'm going to start with, let's start with our purple, just like we did on our egg. And I'm just direct painting for this one too. And again, if you want to go in and use that water first, absolutely. I need a little bit more concentrated ink, so I'm pulling it out of that larger, more concentrated dip. There we go. Okay, clean in between. Now, should I make my um, flags wonky donkey? <laughs> match them to the color scheme here <laughs> or should I do a regular rainbow <laughs> wonky donkey or regular rainbow you guys decide and let me know <laughs> so just put wonky donkey or regular rainbow and I have splattered okay so I have a tiny little drop of serenade there here's how you try and lift it so go in with a fair amount of water and brush the surface. Now, I'm lucky there's no other paint in that area, so I'm not going to affect any other areas. So you can do this on a white paper, right? But you can't do it where you've painted. <laughs> wonky donkey, all right, we'll do wonky donkey. Perfect, I'm good with wonky donkey. Okay, so we're just following the same color scheme here. We're going to go do -si do on our next little flag. And they're so cute. But I like the fact that there's enough of them to do exactly the same colors as our egg. So green, which is our melon ice. Doot, doot. So cute. Okay. And our wonky donkey version is, oh boy. And nobody's going to know that you originally intended to do it a regular rainbow, but you went for a wonky donkey. <laughs> Hi, Sandra. Okay, orange, which is our apricot. Next. Wee. Pretty. Okay. <laughs> Funny. Okay, chiffon, which is our yellow. And just so you know, all of our refills are available in the shop. And I highly recommend if you buy the ink pad, um, 
go for purchasing that refill if you can. And if not, come back later. Okay, so I got one more flag left and we're going back with our wonky donkey. We're going in with our serenade. There we go. Okay, we're looking pretty good through here. Okay, so let's do the little teeny bill. Yes, there's a little teeny bill on our duck. So I'm going in with a little bit of a watered down apricot. Okay. And our bunny, we he needs some super cute little pink cheeks. Okay. So this is where water painting comes into play again. So you're going to, I'm going to do the majority of his face below his eyeballs because that's all really the area that we need to do this. Okay, so I've just water painted. Okay, right. Now, I'm going to go into my do -si do here. And I'm going to use this part as kind of another little palette here. Okay, I'm getting my brush wet again with clean water. And I'm making this diluted so it's not so highly pigmented. Like, that's almost a red. Whereas that's a pink. So we're making it more pink. Because it's water on his face, I'm just going to drop two tiny little pink patches. And I wish I could pick this up to show you, and I will. Um, see on my original. Not sure if you guys can see it. So two tiny little pink dots for his cute little pink cheeks. Okay. And if you think they wicked out too much, um, use your paper towel. Okay, so we're also going to go in with that diluted pink ink and do the inner sides of his ears. Need to bring in a little bit more because I don't have enough. There we go. A little bit of watered down pink for a do -si do for his cute little ears. Okay, brilliant. Okay, they have kind of this topper to the basket. So again, let's go in and we're just going to add a shade of blue to kind of the underside only. So I'm going to, again, paint with water first. Okay. Dun, 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 dun. And then watch our wicking happen again. Clean water. We're going into our blue which is our oh boy. And I, all I'm going to do is touch my ink to the bottom part of that fluffy stuff on the basket. And the ink will wick, but it'll still concentrate the majority of it towards the bottom because that's where you've put it into the water. It's going to start concentrated at the bottom and wick up to the top to be a little bit more see-through or transparent okay so we have one more area to do with this little fella so we have the basket and I want to show you what happens when you play around with inks but you use multiple inks okay like I said I will show you this up close because I know I can't bring my camera in any closer I've already zoomed in as much as I can, but I will pick this up. We will give it a little quick dry and I'll pick it up for you guys. Okay, so again, I'm painting with just clean water and I'm trying my best. I don't want to touch that frilly light blue edge of the basket. Okay, so everything has got water in it. And this time I'm going to take two separate inks. So we're going to use some chiffon. So I'm going to touch our chiffon in a couple of areas, concentrating them. So instantly it goes, and it's pretty cool when you get your face in there and it happens. Now, I'm going to kind of blend this with a little bit of our orange color, which is our apricot. And I don't want it like too concentrated. So I'm going to water this ink down a little bit more to make it a little bit lighter okay and then I'm going to do the same thing 
I'm just going to touch it in to some areas and go back for more. And what happens is if I have an area, whoops, I've got a stray hair on it. If I've got an area that I've already touched, you get a blend of inks. And especially some of these areas are like closed little squares or rectangles. So you still have to kind of transfer the ink if you want it to go into an area. But if it's open, like this kind of big shape here, uh, if you touch them together, they will blend and wick together. So you can get a, a modeled look. You could even do that up here. You could start off with yellow on one side and do orange and have them wick together. And you could do that for each line. That would be really, really cool. But you can have lots of fun with just the, the products that you already have in your stash. You don't need to go and get watercolor paints. Okay, you've already got them. Okay, these are water. You know, you can use them with water. There's some inks that you can't. But a lot of them you can. You can use them in this in this manner. And if you don't have a reinker, just take your ink pad. And there's all kinds of products on the market. Um, there's um, this surface by Tim Holtz. It's you know it's waterproof. Just tap your ink pad on it, and it becomes your palette. Okay, there's all kinds of surfaces. You can even use your packaging as surface. So um, this would work great for a palette because it's slick and shiny. You can wash it, wipe it off after you're done. Just dot your ink pad on that. That'll work. It's all good. Okay. You guys want to see it up close? So this is our cute little bunny in his sweet little egg balloon so again you can see how things have kind of blended and softened and again if you use water um you get a different effect than just painting it on like the even this one versus this one is different because this was straight ink this was a water put ink in so these were all pretty much inked in so they're a little bit more concentrated. So you can have super good time creating all kinds of scenes. And I highly recommend that you emboss them first because it just makes it so much easier. So much easier. There we go. So like uh, Rhea said earlier, this little fella is now in the shop and will be coming out for our newest kit on Friday. And this kit has some really, really cool things in it. Some things that you maybe haven't tried yet. So I highly recommend joining us on Friday for our Instagram hop. Um, because we have lots of inspiration coming to you guys using this stamp set. So awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I will be here on Sunday. Haven't decided what I'm going to share, but we're going to have some fun. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks for joining me today. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment. All right. Bye, guys.